Hey, it's Mike here, and today, ADHD in childhood. Have kids always had ADHD? No, because they could focus all day long when we had them working in the mines, yet now we took them out of the mines. They can't focus on anything except for Minecraft. For those that don't know, that's a child labor simulator. Clearly, we need to bring the mines back. I'm totally kidding, and I have been accused of having ADD here and there because I go on major tangents, but today we're talking about diet and ADHD in children, not minds. There's a ton of compelling dietary research on ADHD that most people are not aware of. We have studies looking at particular foods and how they are associated with ADHD, and some of them are very associated. We also have some particular dietary interventions that are interesting. And then we're also going to look on whether or not that artificial food coloring that has been pointed to has an effect. There's some good research on that. Let's just go. All right, right off the bat, I wanna throw down a disclaimer because ADHD is a complicated condition. And even if some ADHD cases are completely caused by diet, certainly all of them are not. So we need to manage expectations here. Also, the newer school of thought is that ADHD is a type of neurodivergence, which more or less implies that it would be a permanent condition. But I think it's different than other types of neurodivergence in that not all ADHD cases are gonna be some type of permanent brain state, for example, about 40% of people who have childhood ADHD have it just go away as they become adults. We still see improvements in this condition with certain studies that we will cover. So, you know, it's a little bit of a gray area here. And next, I do wanna say that I think a lot of ADHD symptoms and perhaps some children that are diagnosed with ADHD are actually just the result of essentially being put in an indoor prison where they're forced to focus on boring content that they have no motivation to listen to. But again, we have those children who wanna be focusing on things or things that they would be interested in and they can't even focus on that. So clearly it's it's a complicated issue, let's just go. Let's get to the literature first. Let's start off by scanning you know, types of food or dietary patterns and how they are associated with ADHD. One of the earliest larger studies that was done was out of Australia in 2011 on dietary patterns in ADHD. And in particular, they looked at Western dietary pattern scores, which are really increases in intakes of energy dense, heavily processed foods, rich in saturated fat. We know that's mostly from animal products, salt and sugars. And they also found some foods in particular that stood out like full fat dairy and red and processed meats and sugary drinks. Let's see the results. A higher Western dietary pattern score was associated with over twice the odds of being diagnosed with ADHD. That is insane. And now for those particular foods, the ones that stuck out at the top of the pack, we're talking about red meat at you know 2.3 odds, processed meat twice the odds, and high fat dairy products twice the odds as well. Finally, the only other non-animal product up there was soft drink intake. And it's always good to have studies more or less replicated. That brings us to 2020 and looking at this Iranian study that also looked at a Western diet index. In this case, they say, quote, the Western pattern was rich in processed meat, red meat, pizza, eggs, snacks, animal fat, hydrogenated fat, and salt. Just another day at Denny's here in America. Anyway, the results were insane. They found that the higher versus lower Western dietary pattern was 3.45 times the odds of having ADHD. But the cool thing here is they also looked at a healthier dietary pattern, which was, of course, shown to be vegetables and fruit consumption. And they found that that was associated with about half the odds of being diagnosed with ADHD. In other words, putting those together, eating a higher plant, less processed diet, puts you at seven times lower odds of being diagnosed with ADHD than eating a higher Western diet loaded with meat and other animal fat. I think that pretty much sums the whole thing up. I'm just gonna stop the video there. What, you actually wanna learn more about this? Okay, let's go. Iranian researchers in 2022 backed up those findings in this particular situation, looking at a Mediterranean pattern and found that once again, that healthy, more plant-based direction was associated with about half the odds of ADHD. And to once again back that up, newer research from 2022, quote, those eating less fruits and vegetables were likely to have more severe inattention. 
All right, now I wanna investigate sugar here because when you're thinking of diet and ADHD, most people's mind probably goes straight to sugar, perhaps kids chugging sodas and then bouncing off the walls and just being very stereotypically ADHD. The question is, even if it makes hyperactivity worse by eating a bunch of sugar and sweets, does it actually end up causing some chronic state known as ADHD and an actual diagnosis? This massive 2020 meta-analysis on sugar consumption and ADHD just pulled a bunch of high quality studies together, really the best that we have. And their conclusion was that sugar and soft drink consumption was only really associated with a 20% increased risk of ADHD. And they even go on to say that the results were mixed. That means some of the studies showed a lower risk. Come on, those studies needed to be funded directly from the children who like chocolate <laughs> anyway. Looking to a study like this one on diabetes and ADHD. At first, it looks like there's some strong blood sugar connection here, perhaps, because type 2 diabetic patients were three times as likely to have ADHD. Is it from those blood sugar spikes causing something? Well, then we look at type 1 diabetics, which is an autoimmune condition, which would also you know, signify a regular blood sugar, and they had no increase in ADHD. This implies that it's not some type of just blood glucose spiking irregularity situation that's leading to ADHD. It could actually be a poor diet leading to both of these conditions. As I've discussed before, saturated animal fat is causally implied in the development of type two diabetes, and vegans who don't eat a bunch of saturated animal fat have wildly lower diabetes rates. So again, it could be that that poor Western diet is leading to both of those conditions because we know a Western diet also leads to type two diabetes. Well, then how would a Western diet or animal fat or anything like that actually lead to ADHD? One potential mechanism is inflammation. We know that processed foods can of course increase inflammation. Children with ADHD have higher levels of certain markers from certain studies like C-reactive protein and interleukin-6. And as I mentioned before, put people on a vegan diet and their inflammation markers go down. Well, we have studies linking inflammation to ADHD behavior. We just don't have a really strong mechanism, at least that I was able to find in literature, showing that if you have higher inflammation, you're just gonna be more likely to have poor attention, focusing, etc. You know, maybe that's how it works, but I think we need more data on that connection. Another interesting one worth looking at, it's also an association, has to do with gut health. From this Taiwanese study, unhealthy diets such as high fat and sugar consumption may change the healthy microbiota composition, which leads to an imbalanced microbial population, or gut dysbiosis, which we also know is driven by diet. I mean, you can feed people a bunch of animal fat and within 24 hours, their gut shifts for the worst, as this study found. But what's interesting about the Taiwanese study is it actually looked at ADHD and various dietary connections and says, quote, based on correlations they found between bacteria diet and ADHD, we suggest that the gut microbiome community is associated with dietary patterns and linked to the susceptibility to ADHD. Now I always wanna ask, what if my idea here is not the case? What if diet is not connected at all? Well, one area that could explain that is socioeconomic status, which the first study we looked at even mentioned is associated with ADHD if it's lower status. And from this study, we're talking about the lowest socioeconomic status having about twice the risk of ADHD. Stites like WebMD explain that away by saying, hey, that could be due to factors related to financial difficulties and parents' marital status. It could also just have to do with lower readiness for school, which could lead to behavioral issues. However, I can't help but think a better explanation could be the trauma that is associated with a low socioeconomic status, leading to either ADHD or just ADHD-like symptoms from this organization on childhood trauma. You can see a massive overlap between ADHD and trauma symptoms. We're talking about things like things like difficulty concentrating or being easily distracted, but bringing it all the way back, maybe it is that people of low socioeconomic status also happen to eat a worse diet, a more Western diet here, at least in the US, that standard American diet. And there is one way to get some hints at this, and that is to look at dietary interventions which we're about to do. If diet is only correlated and has no causal relationship, then we shouldn't see any change with interventions, but uh, that's not the case. This brings me to a 2011 randomized control trial in The Lancet, which more or less 
instigated this entire video and researching this topic, and that was on a elimination diet that focused around allergies. They actually did essentially an allergy panel, an immune panel, for 270 foods for each of the children in this study, and then they tailored a diet that would hopefully have the least amount of allergies to the children specifically. And the results were that they saw improvements in symptoms in about 60% of the children. This has been criticized though. First of all, it said that it's just an implausible diet based off what they were feeding these people. Other researchers even pointed out critical flaw that was that the authors relied on essentially the parents reports which were not blinded to their eating intervention so potentially biased they also say quote because the diet was individually tailored and restricted a reliable placebo was not possible come on they could have done a placebo diet where they just pretended that the kids were allergic to certain foods perhaps the foods that they liked the most <laughs> hey jimmy J jimmy pay attention what's your what's your favorite food chocolate oh well looks like you're allergic to that no more of that you spoiled brat moving on we have sort of general elimination diets that don't do any sort of allergy panels and they've seen some pretty good results this one it wasn't randomized control trial did see an improvement it was only about a 10 percent improvement and that was even in a somewhat more plant-based direction which is interesting however we actually have a dutch randomized control trial that pinned an elimination diet directly up against just a quote healthy diet which was following the Dutch dietary guidelines, which they summarized as unlimited vegetables with limits on meat and no white bread. But yeah, looking to the actual Dutch guidelines, they're pushing, you know, Mediterranean patterns. The patterns are characterized by more plant foods and less animal foods. Not vegan, obviously, but any more plant-based direction. What were the results? After five weeks, 34% of the participants doing the elimination diet responded positively, while 51% on the healthy diet responded positively and positively was at least a 30% improvement on their ADHD score from the DSM-5. Now I wanna hit on that artificial food coloring, which has a long history from this paper. In the early 1970s, research conducted by Dr. Benjamin Feingold found that when hyperactive children were given a diet free of artificial food additives and dyes, symptoms of hyperactivity were reduced, though research was later mixed. And I'm gonna be honest, when I read that, I was like, it looks like this might not actually be something here. Well, looking to a way higher quality study, this meta-analysis from 2022, that essentially took all of the highest quality evidence. Well, its result was surprising in that the majority of studies identified some evidence of a positive association and that the studies support a relationship between food dye exposure and adverse behavioral outcomes in children. Whoa! When it comes to red dye number 40, don't go overboardy. <laughs> anyway, they point to mechanisms being oxidative stress, which has been demonstrated in mice using yellow five, or in humans looking at a histamine or essentially allergy response, which they believe could modulate some human behavior. One more reason to stay away from processed foods, even though you know the results were still mixed there, we have to acknowledge that. Anyway, in the end, it does appear that there is a repeated relationship with this Western dietary pattern and ADHD in children. And again, we have the study with Western dietary patterns leading to three and a half times the risk of ADHD if you're eating more of those animal products or half the risk with higher vegetable consumption. And of course, that Dutch study showing that a quote unquote healthy, which is slightly more plant-based diet outperformed an elimination diet. That is insane and the implication is huge for you know the six million children that are just diagnosed with ADHD in the US and then all the other ones globally. Now the mechanisms are a bit shaky, but this likely has to do with inflammation and oxidative stress. And yeah, well, it's not the best study in the world. There could be that allergen aspect as well from the Lancet. And finally, there's some pretty decent evidence that in certain cases, those artificial food dyes could be playing a role as well. I mean, we're not talking instant cure there probably, but one more reason to ditch the processed foods. In the end, once again, ADHD is a complex complex issue, even if there's somebody out there who is 100% having diet cause their ADHD, it's certainly not causing all ADHD, but I think there was some really important information that we looked at today. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you think about it and what could be causing this, maybe some mechanism insights if you have any. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.